and welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and I've been watching these Commander Master spoilers come out, and honestly, there wasn't a whole lot to talk about. Nothing really exciting. We got some good reprints, but I certainly wasn't super excited every day to wake up and see which cards were being spoiled every day. It is pretty much just reprints. We do have some new cards, though. And when I was going to make my first video about Commander Masters, I was hoping it would be a good thing, but that is not the case. I, I knew I was going to be making at least one video, and in fact, I made a video last week talking about this. I knew I was going to make at least one video where I was going to see a card and have to immediately make a video right away about it. And that is the case here, but again, not necessarily a good thing. It's not a 99 card either, it's actually a commander. So, the card I'm going to be talking about here is Ruka Ramel Biologist. White, blue, black, green and a red, so a Wooburg five-color commander, human wizard 3-3. Three, three. As Ruka Ramel Biologist enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Slivers you control and non-token creatures you control are the chosen type in addition to their other creature types. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. And we're not done yet. Pay three and tap, create a one, one colorless sliver creature token. So uh, th this video is not gonna be praising this commander. I'll just say right now, there, there's a whole bunch of things I don't like about this. I'll talk about the things I do like about this, okay? The first thing that I like about this, and I know a lot of people will say the good thing about this commander is it's sort of like Morophon in that it is a five color commander that is enabling you to play more janky tribes, right? And yes and no. And I will get more to why that is sort of the case, but sort of not the case. We'll go over the abilities here, right? I mean, slivers you control and non-token creatures you control are the chosen creature type, right? So this is gonna come into play, you're gonna choose a creature type and all your slivers that you control are that creature type. So obviously you're gonna be playing slivers, right? And, and this is the first thing that I don't love about this commander. If there's one thing the format didn't need, it was another five color sliver commander. We have how many of those already, right? For all the people that are like, okay, well, this is gonna enable you to play more janky or tribes or whatever. Sure, but if there's one thing we didn't need, it's another five color commander that is going to be enticing you to play slivers, that we absolutely do not need another one of those in the format. We got a bunch already, some really, really good ones. And in fact, of course, another one from this set that a lot of people are gonna be playing. And obviously, you know, this is the pre-con, this is, you know, that new sliver commander is gonna be the face of the new pre-con, and this is probably in the 99. They always do the backup commanders there. I mean, okay, whatever. I'm not talking about the pre-con here. I'm talking about this specifically as a commander. We absolutely did not need another five color sliver commander, and I don't think we need another five color sort of good stuff commander either. They, they really have been going completely overboard with that. I, I've talked about on many occasions, you know, five color is already the most popular color combination in the entire format. People play five color by far more than any other color combination. So we certainly didn't need more five color good stuff commanders. Every single set now has a five color commander and usually it is a sort of good stuff, either good stuff commander or it's bringing together some archetype or bringing together some forgotten about mechanic. You know, they're doing that as well too. Um, Tom Bombadil, I guess, is a great example that just came out in the Lord of the Rings where you got a five color Sega commander now because we absolutely needed that in the format, right? We also had the five color mirror commander come out earlier this year because, of course, we needed a five color commander that allowed everyone to play mirror tribal. And if you go back and look at these commanders, a lot of the sets that have come out in the last five years, the most popular commander from that set is actually the five color commander. Not a lot of surprise there, right? You go back to Call Time, which is the first set that came out after I started my channel. Most popular commander from that set is Asika, the five color commander from that set. You know, Dominaria United, right? The, the, the tribal cascade, legendary, whatever you want to call it, commander there is the most popular commander from that set. It's very common for the most popular commander from a set to be a five color commander, which I don't love. I already don't love that. But that, that's just my opinion. Again, I think five color sort of goes against the, the uh, spirit of the format a little bit because, of course, your color identity is a really important part of deck building in the commander format. And a five color commander doesn't have a color identity. I know people will say it's five colors, but it's every color. You, you don't have that color restriction, which is really a fundamental part of the format. I don't love that about it. But anyway, I'm not going to harp on that. Let's talk about this actual commander. So what this guy also does that I don't love, it is 
taking a tribe, Slivers, which is arguably the most powerful tribe in the entire game of Magic already. I, I would say there's probably, I mean, obviously elves is definitely up there. Goblins and elves are definitely up there. Zombies, uh, again, another really powerful tribe. Uh, slivers, I would say, because every single sliver card is helping all the other slivers. I don't know. I think it's it's pretty easy to make the case that slivers is the most powerful tribe. Certainly has the most support. I looked it up before I did this video quickly. 110 slivers that have that tribal aspect. So that's 110, not including the ones that are, that are coming out in this set, obviously, as well, right? We got a whole bunch more coming out in this set. So we already have 110. So your options there, you can very easily just take all the best ones. You don't even need the bad ones. You just need all the good ones and then whatever ones you want to use for your deck. There, there's a ton, maybe more than any other tribe out there. What slivers are always going to have is they're always going to have the tribal aspect that is, that's what they do, right? They're going to be helping the other slivers that you have in your deck. So if I make any five color sliver deck, I'm already laughing because all my slivers that I play are going to be helping all my other slivers. We already know that it's really easy to make a five color sliver deck and have them be really busted. But then on top of that, now I get to add other tribal aspects here, right? I can, when I cast my Rooker Mamel, and of course, I'm going to have a bunch of slivers in this deck already. You don't have to, but it's kind of silly not to, right? You could maybe, and, and again, this is what people are going to like about this commander is I don't have to put any slivers at all in this deck. What I can do is play an underwhelming tribe and allow it to have, you know, other aspects from other tribes, but that doesn't really do that, right? What, what this is going to do, if I choose Pegasus here, what I'll end up doing is I'm going to put that one Pegasus tribal card in, which is Archon of Sun's Grace, right? Which is going to give my Pegasus lifelink. But then I'm just going to choose Pegasi or Pegasus or whatever with my commander, and it's going to make all my creatures Pegasus, but then what? What a lot of people are going to be thinking here is, oh, and now I can do Pegasus tribal and I can have the slivers help out my Pegasus, make them better. No, no, no. It's actually doing the opposite. What this is doing is you're playing a sliver deck, but you're actually just making the slivers better by taking any other, whatever slivers are not able to do, which of course ain't much, but now I can take the most busted tribal aspects of any other tribe and add it onto my slivers as well, right? Because slivers you control are going to be that cr creature type. And also, by the way, the creature spells and the creature cards that aren't on the battlefield as well. So for example, one of my favorite cards, Hakon, can very easily go in any deck, right? Because now I can just choose knights. And what that's going to allow me to do, of course, is cast all my slivers from my graveyard, which is something that slivers aren't able to do. That is something that I am now going to enable my slivers to do because that's something I'm pretty sure there is not a sliver that does that. All I have to do is play a normal five color tribal sliver deck and just put hack on in there. Nothing else. I mean, I could put some other night tribal stuff. There's a lot of good ones out there, right? So what I'm doing with this commander is I'm taking all the busted stuff that might be in night tribal, right? Just two or three cards. That's all I need. I just need two or three tribal cards that I can put in here. And then when I cast my commander, I just name night. Now all my slivers have all of that stuff as well. Now I can put my hack on down and cast all my slivers from my graveyard if I want to. I'll just throw out another example here. Guilt Leaf Archdruid. This is the perfect example of what I'm talking about. This is a, in my opinion, really busted tribal aspect for a tribe that isn't super popular, right? It's for druids. Whenever you cast a druid spell, you get to draw a card. So now with my commander, I can name druid. And every time I cast my slivers or any of my creatures, I'm going to be drawing a card, right? Because I'm going to name druid and and the creature spells I'm casting are going to be druids. So every time I cast something, I get to draw a card. And then on top of that, tap seven untapped druids you control, gain control of all lands target player controls. So now I have my win con stapled on this card as well, right? So now, again, now I can just tap down my slivers to gain control of all my opponent's lands. I'm just using that one as an example. That's the first one I thought of where I'm like, okay, now I can play a five color sliver tribal deck, which already is good on its own and I'll just put that one card in my deck right I'll put that guilt leaf arch druid in my deck so that when I get it I can cast my commander and all my slivers are now druids whenever I cast a sliver I get to draw a card and I can start tapping down my slivers to gain control of all my opponent's lands
That seems pretty good, right? The other thing I don't love about this, of course, is that you can just name Sliver, right? Which kind of seems funny. Why would I name Sliver and make my Slivers into Slivers? Well, of course, you can make all your other creatures into Slivers. That is another thing that I think can make a really busted version of this deck is now I can just take really, really good creatures, just good stuff creatures, and name Sliver. So again, I'm just doing a five color Sliver tribal deck like I normally would anyway. Now I can throw an Esper Sentinel in there, right? Just take any really good busted creature and I'm going to name Sliver with my commander and I'm going to turn my Esper Sentinel into a Sliver because of course that's a non-token creature. So now it's going to get all the bumps, right? I already have this really, really good creature that I can now turn into a Sliver and have all those bumps from all my other Slivers. Or I could put a Sarah Sentinel in there or any creature, right? I could take just the best creatures there are in the format, my Dockside Extortionist. I can now throw my Dockside Extortionist down, which I might want to throw in my sliver deck anyway. And guess what? Now I can turn it into a sliver and it's going to be giant and scary and whatever else. Don't love that either. Essentially with this commander, what they're doing is, first of all, if there's any tribe that didn't need more support, it was slivers and they're getting a bunch in this set. If there's any tribe that didn't need another fantastic com commander, especially a five color one, it is slivers and we're getting another fantastic five color sliver commander a lot of people out there probably have five color sliver decks and they're going to switch to this because slivers are you're, they build themselves because they they are a tribal aspect in themselves that's why they're so easy to build as a tribal deck they all help each other that's the whole idea right so now if i have some other sliver commander as, as my commander i can easily swap it out for this one and just put hack on or guilt leaf arch druid in the deck so that i can have that added aspect to what i already have in the deck right? Don't love it. <laughs> Don't love it at all. And again, I know people will look at this and they'll get super excited about it because they, they'll think, okay, well, this is going to enable me to play a janky tribe, but I don't think it's doing that at all. Uh, you know, if I want to do Pegasus tribal, this is not a good commander for that because all it's going to do is make all my slivers into Pegasus so I can play my Archon of Sun's Grace and give all my slivers lifelink, but I already have slivers that give lifelink and a, a lot of slivers that do better. So not great for that at all, right? Don't love it. This is one thing the commander format absolutely did not need more of, in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, so far, not so good from this set. Again, there's some decent reprints. I don't know how much original stuff we're getting that is not reprints, but so far, been pretty bummed out by what I'm seeing from this set. I'm not loving it. You guys let me know what you think in the comments below. That is it for today though, and thanks for tuning in.